Section 20.3, we're going to focus on free energy in our voltaic cells and our ox redox reactions and kind of figuring out can we calculate free energy and we're going to so we're going to take what we've talked about in chapter 19 with free energy and apply it to our voltaic cell. So in a redox reaction we can figure out the change in free energy. Free energy is equal to negative N times F times E. Now E is the energy F is Faraday's constant. Now Faraday's constant is 1 farad is 96,485 joules per volt mole. Now that constant will be given. N is the number of moles. So under standard conditions, the change in free energy is equal to negative NFE. What we can do is we can rearrange this equation to get the Nernst equation. Remember that change in G is equal to change in G plus RT, natural log of Q. We're just going to sub in NFE. When we sub in NFE, we can use a couple natural logarithms to figure out the energy in an equation based off of our free energy value. So when everything's said and done, we can get E is equal to the E of the cell minus 2.303 times RT over NF times the log of Q. Now 2.303 times R times T at 298 divided by R is 0 0.0592 volts so we can even reduce this equation a little more. And that is kind of just the general gist of the Nernst equation. Haven't all right, the Nernst equation, you'll dive into it more, but what I want to connect to is the ability to calculate free energy within a redox reaction. And I've mentioned this before, but let's kind of talk about these. Where do we see oxidation reduction reactions in real life? You're going to see batteries, you're going to see a lead grid, your cathode filled with spongy lead, your anode, you're going to see an electronegativity difference of about 1.5 volts. Alkaline batteries are the same way. You have zinc and potassium hydroxide as your anode, and your cathodes, manganese dioxide and graphite. Hydrogen fuel cells are working on the same thing. Uh, corrosion, anytime you have rust in real life, that is a, a hydro, or rust is an ox redox reaction where you're transferring uh, electrons back and forth. So, I know section 20.3 is fairly short. I just wanted to make the connection between uh, free energy and then real life applications of ox redox reactions. This is the end of chapter 20.